Faster than light travel, wormholes, warp drives, anti-gravity. How is it that the cool physics stuff is always that which doesn't exist? Or maybe physicists are just wrong about what exists. A paper which just appeared last week says that tachyons, that are particles which move faster than the speed of light, might exist after all. And I want to explain why that isn't as crazy as it sounds and what's it got to do with wormholes and warp drives. This video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. The word tachyon is Greek for a fast thing and indeed they'd be very very fast, faster than anything we've ever seen, faster than light itself. At first this seems possible because contrary to popular belief, Einstein's theories do not rule out faster than light travel. It's just that we don't know a way to accelerate an object from below to above the speed of light. The speed of light is a barrier, really, rather than a limit. I explained this in more detail in an earlier video. Nevertheless, physicists believe that nothing can move faster than light. It's for two reasons. One is that such particles can appear as if they go back in time. And the other one is that they can have negative energy, or so they say. To understand why they say that, I'm afraid I'll have to draw one of these diagrams, though by now you've probably become used to them. This is a space-time diagram with time on the checks notes vertical axis and space on the horizontal. We draw the speed of light by convention at a 45 degree angle. So if you have a particle going on this line that's slower than the speed of light, if it goes on this line it'll be faster than the speed of light. The line which the particle moves on is called the world line. The issue with tachyons going back in time now comes about as follows. A particle which moves faster than the speed of light would by some observer has been seen as a particle that goes back in time. This is because if you think that this is what you see, a particle goes forward in time faster than the speed of light, then an observer who moves relative to you might actually see this, a particle going backward in time. Note though that to make this point I had to put an arrow on the line. I'll come back to this in a moment. The issue with the negative energy of tachyons is really the same problem. This is because in Instead of taking a space and time diagram, we could use energy and momentum. For a particle that moves at a constant velocity, the momentum just goes in the same direction as the world line. So by the same argument as previously, it can go backward in the energy direction, which means it has a negative energy. And then, so the argument goes, that can't exist. Because if one could have particles of negative energy, then one could make pairs of particles of positive and negative energy out of nothing. And our entire universe would have ripped itself apart long ago, probably out of laughter, because I'd say this argument is obviously wrong. It's because particles don't go forwards or backwards in time. That's a physically meaningless statement. Particles are in space somewhere at some time. That's it. They don't move in time. That doesn't mean anything. This was why to even make sense of this, I had to put an arrow on the word line. As I just said a week ago, that a particle goes back in time to the left means the same as that a particle goes forward in time to the right. If you think that one of them has negative energy and the other positive energy, you obviously did something wrong. And that brings me to the new paper, because that's basically what they do, just with maths rather than words. They say that we can solve the problem with negative energy by taking into account that we could always interpret a particle as either going forward or going backward in time. So to any particle they assign a sort of double state, one going forward and one going backward in time. And the energy that the particle has is then by definition the positive one. That sounds very obvious, but mathematically it's a new idea. Well, kind of. Because there's an interpretation of quantum mechanics which works similar to that. It's called the two-state vector formalism. According to this interpretation, if you want to correctly describe what goes on with a quantum particle, you both have to ask how it would behave forward in time and backward in time. So Schrödinger's cat isn't only dead and alive, it's also dying and coming back from the dead. 
If that made no sense, don't worry. If you calculate anything using this interpretation, it comes out to be the same as normal quantum mechanics. So what's the point then? Well, the new paper suggests that the point is that it can also deal with faster than light travel. What's this to do with wormholes and warp drives and anti-gravity? The connection is that these three require negative energies. And that's the reason why physicists will tell you that they can't exist. The new paper casts doubts on physicists' reasons to dismiss them. Einstein is a little skeptical of all this faster than light business. But personally, I think this deserves much more attention. It's because I think the reason for the Fermi paradox why we haven't heard of extraterrestrials if they exist, is that they communicate and travel faster than light and we haven't yet figured out how to do it. I can't wait for Amazon to make my tachyonic home deliveries. Maybe they even arrive before I've made the order. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.